Guys, welcome back to another TTM video. As we know, TTM means through the mail. That's autograph seeking done through the mail. You just simply write your favorite celebrity or athlete a letter requesting an autograph. You enclose the item that you want autographed along with a self-addressed stamped envelope and then just wait to see what arrives. This week, we have three successes and we're gonna get right to it. The first one comes out of Jersey City, New Jersey and it's former NFL quarter, cornerback Herb Adderley. Herb Adderley was one of the greatest cornerbacks in NFL history, elected to the Hall of Fame in 1980. And he signed at Herb Adderley, 26. And then down there, if you can see that on the black, it says 80. Herb Adderley. Herb uh, got this back in seven days. And there's a $5 charge. And I think he, his only exception is he will not sign jerseys or full-size helmets. So I guess anything else is fair game. This is a card from the 1991 Enor set. Um, got that back in seven days. He's 80 years old. And uh, as I said, he's one of the best cornerbacks to ever play the game. An odd factoid about Herb Adderley that I didn't know until I started researching is that he played in the four of the first six Super Bowls because he was with the Packers for Super Bowls one and two. And he got traded to the Cowboys really in the prime of his career and played in Super Bowls five and six with the Cowboys. And of course, they won three of those. He won two with the Packers and Super Bowl six with the Cowboys. He was part of that doomsday defense in Dallas. But um, yeah, he's one of the greatest of all time. He made five Pro Bowls. He was on the all decade team in the 1960s. Herb Adderley. This next one is out of the Pittsburgh area, and it looks like he wrote a note on the back of my note, which is kind of cool. But this, this guy is not in the Hall of Fame, but he very well should be. And in fact, I've, in my letter I wrote him, I said it's a crime that he's not in the Hall of Fame, but that's linebacker Andy Russell, and he signed it right along his uh, shoulder pad area there in black Sharpie. That's pretty neat how he did that. And let's see what this note says. I told him he should be in the Hall of Fame, and yeah, oh, it looks like he's building his resume here. He, belie he believes so, too. It says, hi, Michael, go Steelers. Yes, six Super Bowls. So he put an ex six exclamation points, one for each Steeler Super Bowl victory. Andy Russell, 34, another signature there. Team captain for 10 years, seven Pro Bowls, Steeler MVP in 1971, Steeler defensive MVP in 1968 and 70. Two Super Bowls versus the Vikings in Super Bowl IX, Cowboys Super Bowl X. We won both. And then he signed it again with his number, Andy Russell, 34. So that's actually three signatures. And I only sent him one card, so that's pretty neat. But, yeah, Andy Russell, in my opinion, definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And remember, guys, he missed two years two complete seasons because he went to the service in 1964 and 65. So if you add those in, he's clearly a Hall of Famer. But he played for 11 years, and he was a Steeler captain for 10 of those. Seven Pro Bowls. He's part of that Steel Curtain defense. And it's just, um, you know, I heard, I heard it said one time when, when Jerry Kramer from the Packers was finally elected, the question was, you know, why did it take so long? And a lot of people answered, you know, we couldn't put the whole Packers team in the Hall of Fame. And maybe that's why Andy Russell is getting the short end of the stick, because so many Steelers from that era are already in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, and it, especially his two linebackers, they were Jack Lambert in the middle, Jack Ham on the outside, and Andy Russell was on the other side, forming undoubtedly uh, one, the, the best linebacking core in, in NFL history. And maybe that's the reason, because... You know, you guys got you got Joe Green, uh, Lambert, Ham, uh, so many uh, Franco Harris, Terry Bradshaw, Mike Webster, so many of those guys from the Steelers team, and I guess that's why Russell has kind of been overlooked for so long. But that's just unfair for him. If you're good enough to make the Hall of Fame, you're good enough to make the Hall of Fame. It doesn't matter if you have every teammate on your roster in with you. If you're good enough, you deserve to be there, and Andy Russell was good enough. The third return is a press photograph, former Pirate, catcher Ed Ott. 
Ott was a catcher for the Pirates in the 70s and 80s, early 80s. Then he was traded to the, well, let's get rid of that glare here. Traded to the Angels for a guy named Jason Thompson. I used to really like Ed Ott a lot. And I used to despise Jason Thompson when he was uh, traded for Ed Ott because I liked Ed Ott so well. But um, played in the 1979 World Series. He won a World Series ring. He hit 333 in the, se in the series. And he was a really a, a tough guy. He was a high school wrestler. And I remember one uh, tussle he got into against the Mets. I think Felix Mion was playing second base, and he was just a little guy. And when Ed Ott slid into second base real aggressively, Mion kind of flipped his glove into Ott's face, and Ed Ott took exception to that and literally lifted Felix Mion up in the air and body slammed him hard into the turf. And I think he may have broken his collarbone. And frankly, I don't know if Felix Mion ever returned to Major League Baseball after that injury. I don't think he did. Uh, he may have, but I don't think he did. And then this picture is interesting because – you know, it's a different game now. The catchers can't block the plate. There's no collisions at home plate. But back then, you, it was just assumed you were going to get bowled over if you had the ball and the guy was coming down the line. And, and interestingly, this is John Stearns, it looks like, from the Mets coming down the line. And Stearns was a catcher, and he was a real tough guy. Uh, um, I remember when Dave Parker for the Pirates, who was a big guy, 6'5", 230, and he ran like the wind, and uh, he blasted into Stearns. And Parker got the worst end of that one. Parker ended up breaking his jaw. And if you remember, if you've ever seen that uh, year after that, Dave Parker had to wear a football mask, a face mask, on his baseball helmet to protect his jaw so he wouldn't re-injure it. But that's because he collided with John Stearns, and Stearns got the best of it, and Parker got the worst of it. But another Ed Ott story, back to Ed Ott. He was coaching with the Astros, in the early 90s, I think it was 90 or 91, and Rob Dibble was pitching for the Reds, and Dibble was another big guy. He was 6'4", 220, 225, or whatever, but he was really big. And there was a bench-clearing brawl, and for whatever reason, Ed Ott ended up on top of Rob Dibble at the bottom of the pile, and he was literally choking him out. Choking him out. Rob Dibble was blue in the face, and they finally had to pull Ott off of him I think he may have, he was going to kill Rob Dibble. That was funny. Not funny for Dibble, but uh, funny for Ott fans because he was so tough. But that's it for today. We've got three. We've got Hall of Famer Herb Adderley. We have should-be Hall of Famer Andy Russell. And we have former Pirate World Series winner Ed Ott. So, guys, that's it. Remember to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted to all my future videos. I'll have my email down in the description below, and I'll be happy to share any information I have with regard to addresses or other tricks or tips for TTM uh, through the mail autograph seeking. Be happy to share. Just drop me an email. I'll tell you anything I know and everything I know. Uh, but until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you soon.